Today we're going to look at Julius Caesar, the most famous man with the initials JC who was unjustly killed by the Romans. Wait, no. Second most famous. Throwing this bow, chicka wow wow, what you gonna say? You act like you gon' leave, but I know that you gon' stay. You know, people stop me on the street all the time and ask, Spencer, I adore your videos, but why haven't you done Shakespeare yet? To which I reply, How dare you speak out of turn, peasant? I am a YouTube celebrity and will be treated as such. So this got me thinking that now is an appropriate time to talk about Big Bill. He didn't write books per se, rather plays that were acted out by smelly British people 400 years ago. But no one can argue that Shakespeare hasn't had a monumental impact on literature. Therefore, I guess it's worthy enough for me to look at it. The next question to ask is why Julius Caesar? It's a good work, but most critics find it inferior next to some of Bill's other works, like Macbeth or King Lear. But there was no question in my mind I had to look at Julius Caesar. Me and him have so many things in common. Both of us are adored by millions and seek nothing more than total domination of the globe. We're both considered gods next to the common man. And we were both double-crossed and stabbed in the back by someone we truly loved and trusted, Christina. There are admittedly some differences, though. I mean, Caesar can competently lead an army across the globe and all I specialize in is gem cuts and shamelessly self-promoting myself. But I digress. We should begin the story. The play starts with a Roman triumph which is like a parade nowadays, except with less college bands and more weapons and slaves. Julius LeBron Caesar has just wrapped up killing his rival Pompey, and he now has total control over the Roman Republic. His friend Brutus, though, fears that all this power is going to Caesar's head and he's going to name himself king and overthrow the Republic. Him crowning himself would be the ancient equivalent of, like, Obama naming himself Sultan of the American United Emirates and declaring Sharia law. Which, if you believe right-wing pundits, is totally happening. His friend Cassius is egging Brutus on to join a conspiracy against Caesar, saying it would be best for all of Rome. After much consideration, Brutus reluctantly agrees, believing that the Republic is at risk. They hide knives in their togas and proceed to stab the ever-loving crap out of Caesar. Then Mark Antony, Caesar's top general and bro, walks into the Senate where they're proceeding with the stabbing. It's at this moment one has to think that stabbing the leader of the world's strongest superpower out of the blue might not be the smartest idea. It's like assassinating the president without first revealing his Islamic, communist conspiracy to destroy America. I'm on to you, comrade Barack. Brutus, wanting to bring some legitimacy to the operation, spares Antony, who pretends to not care too much that his best friend is bleeding to death on the floor. Once the conspirators leave, Antony pledges to screw them over and let slip the dogs of war. Things come to a head when Antony speaks at Caesar's funeral, turning Rome and the crowd against Brutus and his friends. Fearing for their lives, Cassius and Brutus leave to build an army. So the battle lines are set, with those two on one side and Mark Antony and some kid named Octavian on the other. So we're supposed to be rooting for Brutus because he's our tragic hero, but... Really, are there any real bad guys? Antony's clearly the antagonist, but who can blame him for being a little bit peeved when he's walking in on his boss's murder? You can point at Cassius, I guess, for dragging Brutus into the plot, but he was legitimately fearful of Caesar in power and sticks to his buddy to the bitter end. There really are no true villains. Just ambitious, vengeful, and fearful people. Integrity and motives vary, but none of the characters really want to hurt Rome. They just really don't like the idea of the other guy in power. It's like politics today, except with more stabbing. The ghost of Caesar pops up to troll Brutus and then just kind of leaves. Guess they just wanted to give his actor a little bit more screen time. Then we have the climactic battle of Philippi between Antony and Brutus. And through all the tribulation, all the blood, sweat, and tears, all the cries of liberty, Brutus loses. He loses badly. Rather than be taken by the enemy, he kills himself. I would say it was by eating oops all berries, but I'm pretty sure that joke's been beaten to death. Antony, once again showing that he is more ambitious rival than bloodthirsty tyrant, orders Brutus's body to be carried back to Rome, declaring him the most noble Roman of them all. So what's the final verdict on Julius Caesar? I give it a solid... out of 10. While most tragedies take the cynical route and make all the characters have sinister motives, Caesar comes into its own over the fact that almost all the characters have good intentions. It's the way these intentions crash together which makes everything go downhill. There's plenty more to read into, like honor versus justice, the role of fate, and the cycle of revenge, but if we did, we'd be here all day. Check this book out and remember the sacred rule of Shakespeare. You may not always understand it, but reading it makes you look smart anyway. Thank you.